Today is the 11th of August, 2016, and this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. Woo! Here we go, working our way quickly toward the end of the week. You we know, sure tomorrow are. Tomorrow night's a big night, Kate. It is a big night. And are you ready? No. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Sure. You ready? Bring it on, I'm ready. Lip sync battle. Yeah, baby. Yes. Yeah, baby. We're hey, bringing it. This is war, y'all. But tomorrow night is the big night at the Paramount Theater. You still have a chance to get tickets. They're only $15. Come see a cast of characters that will be joining us on stage. Um, and we're going to put uh, our egos aside and make fools of ourselves and try to entertain the audience while we raise awareness and give attention to um, something our community and, frankly, our country is not talking about, and that is mental health. So be there tomorrow night. Um, we're going to kick things off at 7 o'clock. Oh, why not? Why not? Why not? And um, are you telling people what your song is? Nope. 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 I'm not telling either. I'm not telling. I'm not telling. But I am sharing this. I, my costume has a wig, and I have a real costume. Oh, it's boy. It's not ready yet, but I have one. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I think. Uh, but I do have the wig. My... I don't have. I don't wear. I don't wear anything. I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to wear anything. I mean, I'm not going to wear a costume. I'm going to wear. I'm going to have to wear something. But I'm not going to wear a costume. I'm going to wear something. Get your ticket. Okay, I'm going to wear something, and it but it will not be a costume. And I'm not going to wear. Well, in fact, I wear a wig. Don't know what, what is that. You're such a costume. mess. A You're such a mess. But I, we do want to see you there. We hope you'll come and uh, support as. Um, we all get together to talk about something that, unfortunately, has only been whispered about, and that is mental health. Something very important to everybody. That's right. And I say everybody because one way or another, everyone is affected right. by mental illness, mental health. Right. Not necessarily, I mean, mental illness, I hate to even say that because people say, oh, I, mean, yeah. I don't have a mental illness. Right, no, no, no. right. Huh. Well, you know, depression. Oh, I was about to say, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. Well, no, I mean, just, just that, you know, the, the spectrum, when you, when you Google mental illness, several hundred things come up with it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and depression is one of the mm -hmm. most common things. And mental health issues, from mild to very severe, they, they are saying affects one in four people. Well, you know, I take that and want to take it kind of literal, and I think about my circle of my world, um, and, and I think it's, it's even closer than that. I really wouldn't be surprised if it's closer than that. So, um, you know, PTSD, depression, anxiety, um, eating disorders, um, bipolar. I mean, there's a lot of different um, facets that make up mental health, and sometimes people go through waves in their life where they battle it, and, and the unfortunate thing is many people are trying to battle it alone, or they don't know that there's resources, they don't know that there's support. Um, a lot has changed um, in our state and across the country in recent years, and when funding is cut for programs, guess what? People don't get the help they need. That's right. Um, and uh, if we don't provide an environment in our community to say, and I'll take this quote, it's okay to not be okay, then nothing's going to change. So we're trying to um, really take hold of a conversation that is that is needed, and we want you to be a part of it. That is such a misunderstood name, mental illness, mental health. It's misunderstood because somebody could say, you know, I don't have a problem. I don't have a mental health problem. I'm just depressed. Yeah. Well, duh. Yeah. If you're depressed, that falls under the umbrella. Right. And it's okay to talk about it. That's it's right. okay to be depressed, but just understand what it is. Right. It is a mental condition. If you're depressed, there's all kinds of levels from mild to severe. And I don't know of anybody that at some point in their life hasn't been depressed about That's something. Right. That's right. And so you shouldn't turn your head and say, oh, I can't talk about that. That's just horrible. And when you, when you say mental illness or mental health, the first thing that comes to many people's minds is, is the rubber room out at the hospital. Well, that's baloney. Yeah. They, they don't have a rubber room anymore. There, there's so many different ways of looking at this. Uh, everybody, at one way, at one time or another, somehow has been directly or indirectly affected by someone with mental health issues. Right. One way or the other. That's right. So join us to be a part of it. Tomorrow anyway, it's going to be tomorrow night, right? That's right. Tickets are fifteen dollars. If you want the ticket information, you can go to online to GoldsboroParamount.com. GoldsboroParamount.com. 
or you can call 919-583-8432 at the Paramount. Tickets are still available. And we want to see it sold out, though, right? Yeah. Tomorrow night, got to see it sold out. All right, fifteen dollars. That just seemed like such a little amount of money for what you're going to get. I mean, this is going to be a lot right. of crazy entertainment there. Yeah. I didn't. No, no, it's going to be very serious entertainment. Kind of goofy, but serious entertainment. Ser a little serious. A little serious. It'll be serious. It'll be enlightening. Enlightening. Oh, enlightening. Yes. <laughs> I made you sweat there. Yeah, didn't yeah I? I was sweating. Yeah. Okay, we got. We got the walk and roll series coming up. Yeah. We got a walk and roll series coming up. Uh, the uh, 18th of August, it says here in Pikeville at Pikeville Dees Park Walk. Dees Park Walk. And that's that uh, everybody will meet at Railroad Street and Mill Street, the intersection there, on the 18th of August. And then on the 25th at Wayne Memorial Hospital, a two mile trek. Two mile trek. Uh, meeting at the rear parking lot at the hospital near the pond and that path walks on around behind the pond through a very lovely scenic area. Anyway, two miles. That's right and that walk and roll series is brought to you by Go Wayne Go. The chamber hosted the annual teacher welcome breakfast last week and we had a representative from Go Wayne Go there passing out t-shirts getting people to sign up. Do you know there were 107 new educators joined the Wayne County Public School team Wow! Um, this this school year. So they're getting ready to kick off the end of this month. Wayne County Public Schools will be back in full swing and 107 new educators were at this teacher welcome breakfast. So the chamber and many businesses were thankful for the opportunity to join in with them. And it was great having Go Wayne Go there. That is really Isn't that exciting. neat? 107 new teachers. 107. A little sideways plug if you are on social media go on and check out a photo that Ken Dirksen who's employed with Wayne County Public Schools he's their information officer extraordinaire got in a bucket truck on Center Street thank you city of Goldsboro and got up in the air I wouldn't have done it and took the coolest picture on Center Street of these 107 new educators Wow! it's a it's a neat picture so find it online Wow okay wow. Yeah, we'll do that we'll do that yeah all right, we're going to go to our next segment now on Wayne Goldsboro Television. We'll be back after this on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Today we welcome to the studio Garrett Hamm with the Red Cross out of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base and Kathleen Pate. Hi folks, how are you doing? Oh, nice to see you. Great to have Good you way. with us. Garrett, you're back uh, again here. It's been yep. a while since we've seen you, but I appreciate you coming in. Absolutely, love being and, here. And you, and you brought Kathleen with we you. We did. All right, first of all, uh, before we talk to Kathleen, talk to you about the uh, Red Cross at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Sure. Tell uh, me about it and why do we have a Seymour, uh, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base Red Cross chapter? And how do you work with the local chapter? Okay, uh, the Red Cross on base uh, is there to help service uh, the members of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Uh, the main thing we do uh, and are known for across the military is our emergency messaging system. Uh, that's the 1877 number that if there's a emergency back home mm -hmm. and the family needs to get the, mm -hmm. the message to the uh, service member, they call the Red Cross and uh, we help deliver the message through command. A lot of times they'll be granted leave. That's, of course, based on command discretion, uh, but they can also get some financial assistance to make it home uh, if they need to. Oh, that's great. And we're doing great things uh, in the courts clinic on base as well. Uh, we're in there staffing volunteers, uh, and we work with the chapter. We're integrated with the chapter. So even though we're on base, we're still connected to Wayne County mm -hmm. um, off base as well and part of the community. So we do Veterans Day events. Uh, we work with the National Guard. Uh, we do a lot in the community as well. You do work very closely with the local Red Cross chapter over on George Street. Very much so. Very closely. Uh, might also add that uh, people may be surprised to know how often you're called to contact service people overseas. Yes. Uh, Quite often. We have on average in Eastern North Carolina 11 cases a day. A day. Uh, a day. And that and that's uh, each case is about sixty eight dollars uh, to cover. Um, so you can add that up throughout mm -hmm. a year. Uh, we're providing a lot of financial assistance for uh, military members 
and and that all comes through um, you know donations mm -hmm. and um, really the people helping out to, to man that really service these keeps members. you busy doesn't it, it does it what does. kind of staff do you have here at Seymour Johnson uh, well we have a volunteer staff uh, so all volunteer staff all, all volunteer we are That's 90, fantastic. 98 percent volunteers um, I I'm the only staff member on base. We have a lot of staff here in Wayne County too, mm -hmm. about three or four. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we have hospital leads, um, outreach leads, and we're looking uh, for those positions as well. So mm -hmm. anybody that's credentialed or non-credentialed uh, that wants to volunteer in the medical facility, they can come on down um, as long as they have base access mm -hmm. and we can get them signed up. Anyone with base access, Anyone? and that would include, of course, uh, 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 separated uh, from service as uh, long yeah. as they're retired um, now if you just did four years and got out and you don't have a base ID then unfortunately but we do have some great volunteer opportunities out in town as well so sure we, we would like to engage you even if uh, not in service armed forces mm -hmm. and you wanted to be on the disaster action team mm -hmm. or, or uh, blood ambassador yeah. you can do that as well and I tell you you know and I know you know this but Red Cross is so busy people do not realize everything the Red Cross does. Red Cross, oh sure, they take your blood. Mm -hmm. But you do so many more things than that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and, and we can talk about that in just a minute, but who, who is this lady with, uh, with this you This is Kathleen here? Page. She does the volunteer services. <laughs> um, she covers Raleigh um, mm -hmm. Triangle Chapter, mm -hmm. but she also, um, starting last November, started covering Seymour Johnson here. Oh, that's great. Uh, she's been a huge help. That's great, I can imagine. Yeah. So tell me, what do you do, Kathleen? I mean, I know there's a title and all that, but tell me what, what your job is. So I recruit um, onboard and train volunteers. Uh, so everything from going out and getting to know the community and mm -hmm. uh, finding out how to get the word out, like coming on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm there to help the volunteers do the online application to on the base uh, at the clinic, they do have some, you know, medical screenings um, since it is a medical facility, and right. I assist with that onboarding. And I'm there just as a resource for our volunteers. Um, we want to give them as much support as possible, so I'm here purely to work with them and to help them. Why would a volunteer? Why would someone volunteer to help with the Red Cross? I mean, what do, what do they get out of this? I think the two biggest pieces. One you feel like you're a part of something. Mm -hmm. The Red Cross um, is not just national within America, we're around the world. Um, and so you're a part of something huge. Um, and then the other piece is we're serving in such meaningful hands-on way, um, you know, in emergencies, in times of disaster. It's that humanitarian need, that CPR, the urgent need, um, those phone calls that Garrett was talking about. Yeah when people need it most and um, that's such an important piece that we're ready when people need that. So Kathleen would you say uh, that the Red Cross is uh, works in so many different areas from disaster relief and giving blood and, and uh, helping to contact uh, the volunteers are needed in all aspects of Red Cross. Yes absolutely and things you wouldn't think about. I have a volunteer team that's seven people who help me to recruit and train volunteers. Oh, really? Um, yes, and that's Volunteers just, recruiting volunteers. Exactly. There you go. Yes, um, so it's not just um, those hands-on ways. There's volunteers mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Um, we have volunteers who answer the phone, um, you know, at the George Street office. Sure. Um, we um, just have a variety of folks who are going to home fires and assisting the clients. Yeah. But also people at home who are at their computers activating um, what we call the client assistant cards mm -hmm. um, that are essentially preloaded debit cards um, when um, we're trying to give any financial assistance that may be needed. Yeah. You know, when uh, you mentioned home fires, when uh, if, if you just think about this for just a moment, what if something happened to your home and your home burned to the ground and there you are with a family and children standing out on the side of the street? Mm -hmm. Where do you go? Who's going to help you? All your clothes are gone. Your bedding is gone. Your furniture. What do you What do you do? Well, that's where the Red Cross comes in. The Red Cross helps you find shelter. Help brings blankets to you. They bring clothing. They bring vouchers for for so many different things. You're not there by yourself. The Red Cross is there, saving lives, helping people, and saving lives. That's what you do. Right. And people who volunteer for the Red Cross get not only what you said a moment ago, but there's a lot of self satisfaction there. Absolutely. Helping people. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what it's all about. You're saving lives is what you're doing, and you're, you're, you're recruiting volunteers, and these volunteers really get pumped up, don't they? 
They do. Uh, and um, there were floods um, recently that have impacted Durham and Cary. Yes. Um, and we opened a shelter. And despite the fact that those floods weren't all too well publicized and not too many people knew about them, um, but it mattered to the people who were impacted yeah. that the Red Cross cared. Yes. And were there. And anytime you see a disaster on TV, you're going to see the IRV, the, the emergency response vehicle there, uh, from some chapter, from somewhere. And the Red Cross works so closely together. And our own local Red Cross has a lot of volunteers who actually are trained when there is a disaster in the, in the West from, from uh, fire to, uh, you know, these big fires that they have in California, to mudslides, to, uh, uh, of course, the hurricanes up and down the East Coast. But uh, there are people here who are trained to actually go to these, uh, like the tornadoes in Oklahoma and Texas and all up Tornado Alley there. Recently, we had some volunteers up in West Virginia. There you go. Right. Um, and it's based on need of mm -hmm. who we send up. I know we sent our IRV, our emergency response vehicle, mm -hmm. um, to a couple of recent disasters. And mm -hmm. so we needed two folks to drive those. All right. And Wayne, uh, here in eastern North Carolina and around the country, we're trying to combat the home fires by being uh, a step ahead of it and, and preventative. Um, so we have a program going on nationally called Home Fire Campaign. Uh, what that is, we're going out in canvassing neighborhoods mm -hmm. um, to find out who needs smoke alarms, and we're going in and installing those smoke alarms for them free of charge. Oh, really? Uh, we even, you know, go through and read to them, let them know what they need to know in case of a fire, how to get out, have an escape plan. Uh, and it doesn't cost the homeowner anything? No, no. no. In eastern North Carolina this year, we want to install over 6,000 smoke alarms. Last year, we did over 5,000. Wow. So that's 11,000 in two years. And there's already it's already come out that some of these people that have had them have had home fires, and it saved their life by getting that installed by the Red Cross. So wow. if there's any organizations that want to be involved in that and come out and do a home fire campaign, they can contact the Red Cross and we'll make it happen. It's a great opportunity for groups to volunteer that way. Ah, good idea. Boy Scouts. Yeah. Boom. Absolutely. There you go. Boy Scouts would be a great organization. Or, or, or perhaps even volunteer fire departments could help. Mm -hmm. or even. Uh, we have great partnerships with the fire department. Oh, I know you do. Really do. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they understand. They're smart. They know what the Red Cross does. Oh, absolutely. And we even have businesses that come out that just want to have a day of volunteering and they that's, come out and, and, and go out in the neighborhoods and install these yeah. smoke alarms. And Garrett touched on something that anybody can do today is make it an emergency plan. Um, so when you leave your home, um, if all the family members leave and go in different directions, mm -hmm. you may not see each other. Right. So having that meetup point, having something like the neighbor's mailbox that you'll meet up at, um, and then maybe having one that's a little bit further away in mm -hmm. case the fire also impacts your neighbor's house. So having two spots where you know you're supposed to meet up, and anybody can do that today. There you go. Wow. Well, number one, we all love Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. We do because they are they are us they are they are wayne county Absolutely. they volunteer for so many things here in the county and every every function or event you see where volunteers are needed there's somebody there from seymour johnson air force base and most of the public just doesn't realize that they don't know that because seymour johnson doesn't broadcast that right. they're just out there helping people and volunteering they help tremendously with the red cross uh more than people would realize and we want to thank seymour johnson for, for that but we want to thank you as well for the work you're doing garrett and kathleen for the work you're doing as well, volunteering new recruits to work with the Red Cross and helping people and saving lives. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Absolutely. So how do people volunteer? What do you, how do they, why do they get in touch with you? What do they do? Uh, so there's a couple different ways. Mm -hmm. um, they can contact either of us um, uh, by phone or email. They can call the local chapter. Uh, or you can apply online at redcross.org backslash volunteer. There you go, redcross.org backslash volunteer. I got it, I got it. I got and it. we're in the courts clinic uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right, now that's the, that's the clinic on base. That's the clinic on base. Those are our office hours Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but people can come in and volunteer in the pharmacy, uh, women's health, physical therapy, and the lab. Mm -hmm. Now we're also looking for any credentialed volunteers um, that want to donate their time, whether it be doctors, nurses, uh, physical therapists, or even mental health um, individuals that are that have that, those certifications that mm -hmm. want to come in and just maybe donate a day, a couple hours. Um, like I said, as long as they have base access, mm -hmm. we can get them in there. That's great. And we have a few that we've gotten in already, and it's really helping them out tremendously. All right, redcross.org slash volunteers. 
volunteer 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 one or 919-735-7201 is the phone number for the red cross on george street 919-735-7201 garrett ham thank you buddy uh, good, to you, you good to see kathleen, you again kathleen nice meeting you thank kathleen you. pate yes. thank you so much Hi, I'm Brent Heath, Chairman of the Wayne County Republican Party, and I'm here to express our support for the first responders and law enforcement of Wayne County. We express our gratitude for the sacrifice that you make in providing safety for the citizens of this county. Thank you. We're back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. We are, we are. Hello, hello. Today is Thursday. That means tomorrow's another day. What's tomorrow? Friday. Friday is tomorrow. Yes, yeah, the 12th tomorrow. Tomorrow it is Paramount Theater thing going on. Oh, that boy. thing. That thing. Ooh, that's going to be a big event. That at thing. The Paramount. What's special about today? Today being the 11th, Ingersoll Day. Ingersoll. Ingersoll. Ingersoll Rand or Ingersoll? Ingersoll is a, uh, I guess, a Swedish or Scandinavian company. Okay. And I don't know why they have their own day. They must have bought it. They got plenty of money. Uh, okay, anyway, today is also Presidential Joke Day. I got one for you. All right, go ahead. What's it's not, the it probably oh, wouldn't don't. be appropriate right. enough. Oh. <laughs> Three presidents yeah. walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't do that one either. Because I don't have the punchline. I just made it up. Okay, what else is going on? Absolutely nothing. All right, Absolutely let's nothing. see now. What else do we have here? Elvis and Friends a week from t tomorrow. Tonight, Center Street Jam. That's right. That's right. Tonight, Kearney. Center Street Jam. Is it Blake Kearney? Blake Kearney. Blake Kearney, Kearney Band. Tonight. Woo. Big night. Big, Big night. night. Here's today's trivia question for today. Okay. According to people who know about this sort of thing, because I certainly don't, <laughs> this is moving away from us, including you, an inch and a half every year. Moving away from us. An inch and a half every year. I don't know who measured it. That's what I want to know. An inch and a half every year, this is moving away from us. What is it? That's the trivia question. We'll be back with the answer and more on Wayne Goldsboro Television. In our Crime Stoppers segment this week, we welcome Investigator Eric Goins from the Goldsboro Police Department. How you doing? Good. Hope you are. Thanks for being with us. Yes, sir. Uh, Paige couldn't be here. Sergeant Lerner couldn't be here. But uh, we want to talk about a, a crime that's occurred, and maybe someone watching will have information that they can, can call or send to Crime Stoppers about this crime. Now, this is not an uncommon occurrence. This happens more often than we'd like to think. But uh, tell us about the crime of the week this week. Unfortunately, you're right. It does happen <coughs> uh, all too often. This is a common law robbery that happened in the 1100 block of uh, Maple Street. Mm -hmm. It happened just before midnight on the 4th of August. The victim in this case had advertised a product online to sell and uh, I believe it was Craigslist. Mm. And the arrangements were made between him and the uh, person who would later be labeled as a suspect in the case. The arrangements were to meet him at the uh, sheets on Spence Avenue in Goldsboro. Right. And when he got there, the, there was a, an agreement for the suspect to get in the vehicle with the victim and drive to another address. You know, I believe 1113 Maple Street mm -hmm. was the address that they were gonna drive to. Uh, it sounds as though maybe the arrangements were for him to get money from that address and make the purchase there. Nonetheless, what happened, uh, when he got there, the victim got out of the car and a second suspect uh, ran from behind a set of bushes and tackled the victim. Wow. That, now that sounds like either they were followed, because he certainly wouldn't have known the address ahead of time. But I, the, I'm quite unsure, to tell you the truth. It sounds to me as though there was this second suspect was already there. They had all, The two suspects really? had probably already arranged it. It's the way oh, it sounds okay. to me. Um, we're still seeking leads in the case, yeah. so a lot of times these things are subject to change, but it looks as though he knew that the other suspect was going to be coming back with the victim. He was How hiding in the bushes, that? and when they got there and the victim got out of the car, he, he uh, jumped out of the bushes and tackled him. Once he got the victim on the ground, the two suspects uh, took his Xbox, the, the 
merchandise that he was selling, and mm -hmm. then they, they started to run away. Wow. Uh, the suspects were described as, I think, one was a six foot, uh, approximately six foot tall, six foot tall black male uh, wearing all black clothing. Mm -hmm. The other yeah. suspect was uh, <clears throat> described as maybe around 5'10", uh, wearing baggy clothing. And when they ran away, uh, it's, we understand from the report filed that the victim actually uh, pursued them and began to chase them on foot. Really? And at that point, they turned around and started assaulting him again. So, very unfortunate. That is unfortunate. So, what's an Xbox worth? Is it worth getting beat up over? Two big guys <coughs> turning and, well, who knows what goes through somebody's mind. So, uh, recapping this, the, uh, he, had a, he had a product for sale and he met uh, these two, he met a guy at Sheets, um, at a Sheets service station, which is a good way to handle this. It's uh, nighttime, it, it's well lit, <coughs> you, would, yeah. you would think. Uh, at the point in which he decided to go to another location with... That the, was the mistake. That was the mistake. Yeah. Um, so he, what would you suggest? Should he have brought the merchandise with him? Well, for starters, I would be skeptical uh, from the beginning of uh, making a transaction with somebody you've, you've essentially met online is what's mm, happened. Yeah. Um, never fully trust anybody and take a lot of other things in consideration. Uh, most importantly, the location. If you have to meet them at night, meet them in a well-lit area. Right. Certainly don't relocate yourself to an unfamiliar area. And certainly that Sheets yeah. location was a good location. And there would more than likely be other people, other around, people around, potential yeah. witnesses and that thing. Ideally, I would suggest the daytime would be a much better option. Yes. I mean, this is almost midnight. And uh, so it's not a, the, yeah, the best time. Yeah, what time of the day was this? This was 11.15 at night. Well, that's not smart. <laughs> it would have been it would have been more I mean, wise to meet them during the daytime. That's my early opinion, of course. That Certainly, that is not smart. Uh, so, and you know, when you're dealing with somebody online, they can purport themselves to be anybody. Sure. Uh, you just you never know uh, who you're who you're coming into contact with. Say, hey, um, my name is Gladys. You know, yeah. you could be anybody. Yeah. And certainly, don't put yourself in a in a a, a vehicle that you don't uh, you're not familiar with. Don't put yourself in, in a residence that right. you're not familiar right. with. Uh, I would even caution you, if even if you're just selling your lawnmower out of your garage, don't necessarily invite somebody to your, to your, to your home because now yeah. they know where you live. And, right. and again, you just don't know who you're meeting uh, on the Internet. Um, I would actually strongly encourage people to meet at your local law enforcement agency. Uh, That's I'm, a good I, idea. I feel confident saying the sheriff, the sheriff himself probably would not have a problem with that. And I, I know that the police department would uh, certainly allow that. If, if you've got to make a transaction... Uh, there's nothing wrong with meeting in the parking lot or somewhere, somewhere in the vicinity where there's uh, a police department and a lot of police cars. No, that's a great idea. Around. That's so, a great idea. And I know that, speaking on behalf of the police department, we would actually encourage people to, to uh, meet somewhere, say, on John Street or in that area. Yeah. So. That's a very good idea. Where there are a lot of people, you want to meet in the daytime, and in the parking lot of the, of the sheriff's office or the police department, where there's obviously law enforcement. Yes, sir. That's a great idea. And other people around. And other people around. All right, so if anyone has any information, regardless of how small that information may be, uh, you can contact Investigator Goins, and how do they contact you? They can contact me at 580-4203, uh, uh, it's 919 area code, uh, or they can call Crime Stoppers. And that number is 919-735-2255, 919-735-2255, or you can text, and that number is 919-222. 4230 All right, Investigator Eric Goins of the Goldsboro Police Department with a with a robbery here. Would this be, this is considered a? Would this be cons this is not an armed robbery? This is considered this is a common assault. law robbery. Common law robbery. And, and so the elements of the crime are are, are different. So. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, Investigator Owen, uh, Goins, thank you so much for being with us. It's today. always my pleasure. All right. back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thank you for being with us. Today is Thursday, and that means tomorrow's Friday, and that means, oh boy, it's the end of the work week for that's many. That's right, that's right. And a big thing at the Paramount Theater. i got to mention again, I mentioned this earlier in the week about voting. You know, we vote on November 8th for the big election this year, presidential election, many senators, congressmen, yeah. many local races, yes. state races, many races uh, going on this election season. Early voting in Wayne County, well, in North Carolina, begins October 20th. The law has changed back to what it was before. 
it's all over the place. You do not need your personal ID to vote. You do not need your personal ID to vote. You can't use anyone else's either. Early voting begins October 20th and runs through November 5th. Same day registration, you can register and vote on the same day for er during early voting only. The day of the election, November 8th, you cannot register to vote, which means you won't be able to vote. So if you want to vote and you're not registered, you can do that in early voting. Uh, the way to vote, according to our Board of Elections office, is to absentee vote. You can get an absentee ballot by simply going to waynegov.com slash BOE or call the Board of Elections office at 919-731-1411. 919-731-1411. Talk to them about absentee ballots. And according to the Board of Elections office, that's really an easier way for everybody. You can actually pick your candidate for whom you wish to vote right there in the comfort of your own home. Get the absentee ballot back to the Board of Elections office by a given date. And it just makes lines shorter at the, at the precincts and it just everything goes a lot smoother. And yes, I was assured by Dane Beavers, who is the director of the Board of Elections office here in Wayne County, that every single absentee ballot is checked, counted, and double checked. Okay? That's right. Very good. Anyway, Big election coming up. Yes. 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 Okay, what else do we have? Here's today's trivia question. Yeah, well, I want to know today. what the answer of this the is. The answer is this. The question is, what is moving away from us at, a, at the rate of an inch and a half every year? It takes an, a year to go an inch and a half. What in the world could it possibly be? Well, it has to be something rather large, yes. moving rather slowly. And the answer is, it is moving away from us an inch and a half every year. The answer is... The moon. The moon is moving away from Earth an inch and a half every year. Well, if you think about that, it kind of makes sense. It does. It does. It took me a little bit because I'm like, what? Well, it's but it does. That's right. And centrifugal force, if nothing else, would cause it to yeah. to move away. So an inch and a half every year, an which means you you do the math. Gee whiz! If the Earth is six billion years old and so that means it was a lot closer back then. Good rule. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that. At, yep. We'll do that figuration at, during break. How about we'll that? On that some other time. How's that? And that's it. That's right. We got to run. Got to go. Got to get out of here. Got to move along. Thank you very much. Without, uh, there's nothing to see here any, anymore. Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow, Friday morning. We'll be back at 7 a.m. at noon and at 5.30 p.m. Have yourself a great day. And until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. And this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. Mm -hmm.